While the stress of the pandemic is experienced across all walks of life, those with chronic or life altering illnesses like cancer face unique challenges right now. Their care is vital, yet their risk is high. So how have local cancer clinics adapted? Here's the latest from the Zangmeister. Dr. Emily Whitman with Zangmeister Cancer Center joining me now to give us an update on all that they are doing. They really have had to adapt when it comes to cancer care. So Dr. Whitman, thanks for being with me. Oh, thanks for having me. So we know first and foremost that cancer care cannot be put on hold. We know with everything that's going on in the world, it sometimes was easy for people to avoid going to the doctor, avoid do doing certain things. But when it comes to a cancer diagnosis, that just wasn't possible. Oh, yes, absolutely. Cancer care does not stop for COVID. Um, we've definitely had to adapt, but um, we are still marching forward with our cancer care and, and doing everything possible to make it safe. So let's talk about that a little bit. What are some of the extra precautions that you are taking? So at our center, we are requiring everyone to wear a mask. Our staff is wearing a mask and we are asking patients to wear a mask. It, um, we are also performing screening. We're doing uh, screening the night before. And then the day of, uh, patients are screened temperature checks before they come into the center. Our staff is screened uh, at the beginning of shift and at the end of shift as well. So all of these taking place, and then we know other medical facilities as well have been doing this, uh, doing the same for visitors. And when it comes to maybe going to a chemo treatment, doing an appointment, a lot of people need that, that support. So are you still allowing them to bring somebody to certain appointments? Gosh, that is such a, uh, a good question, and it's a difficult question. Um, our, you know, we are still following guidelines in regards to social distancing, and at this point in time, we are not allowing visitors unless needed for um, translation or getting around or um, very specific needs. Um, that goes in uh, accordance with our national guidelines, um, our oncology national guidelines, and we're doing that to keep patients safe. Um, it is quite difficult, but what we are doing to make it a little better is that we are Zooming family members in or putting them on speakerphone and really trying to include them in those conversations. We're doing everything we can to make um, the patient's family feel like they're with us in that conversation. Absolutely. Technology has been a huge part of, of this pandemic and dealing with it, especially when it comes to health care. Um, as far as telehealth, are you able to offer that option to some patients? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, it's amazing. I had really never done telehealth until COVID came around, and then we became experts in it. Um, we are still absolutely offering telehealth to any patient that would require it or ask of it. Um, it really does. It limits the number of patients in the center to keep it safe for the ones that do have to be here for treatment. And it also keeps the patient safely at home, reducing their risk of exposure. Um, we're doing a lot of routine follow-ups on telehealth, and, and I've, I've really quite enjoyed it, and I think our patients have too. And so let's talk about, you know, we hate to talk about, but worst case scenario, um, when we talk about immunocompromised patients, I mean, cancer patients are among those. So what happens if one of your patients, if somebody who's going through active treatment is diagnosed with COVID-19? Yes, we, we know that cancer patients have an increased risk of death from COVID-19. We know that um, it is very dangerous if, if a cancer patient gets sick. We are still doing the same procedures. The national guidelines still recommend um, if they're asymptomatic or mild symptoms, they stay at home. But we do escalate that care quickly into the hospital setting if we have any degree of concern. Okay, gotcha. And, and the other thing you're doing is you guys always have kind of an extra hand, I think, in, in helping your patients, and especially during the pandemic, as far as giving rides to treatment, right? I mean, you, you really are trying to make this process as easy as possible, despite what's happening in the world. Oh, yes, absolutely. We uh, provide a number of services here, and we've been doing it before COVID, and now we're really stepping up even more because we know that this pandemic creates uh, an emotional toll, but a financial toll as well on patients. And so we have a social worker, we have financial counselors, and we have uh, connections with lots of different uh, groups and agencies to really help provide those services in regards to transportation, um, financial assistance, and um, dietitians, lots of different services, yes. Okay, again, it is Dr. Emily Whitman with the Zangmeister Cancer Center, adapting to what's happening in the world, ensuring everyone under your care stays safe. It is always good to hear that. You can go to zangcenter.com for more information. Thanks again, Dr. Whitman. Oh, thank you.